Thank you for joining us today on The Prophetic Flow. We are going to have a terrific show, and we're so glad you're watching. I have Pastor Doran Collins with me from Calvary Baptist Church in Hawthorne, California, and Miss Doran went to heaven. Yes. yes. Yes, and she even wrote a book about it, which I'm sure that we will be showing you uh, as we go on. But, you know, there's so much in this book, and I dog-eared so much of it, I'm, I hardly know where to begin, except let's begin where you were um, born and raised in Belize uh, on the coast of South America, or no, Central America, I'm yes. sorry, which has the blue hole where people go diving. Uh, into infinity and sometimes people can't find the end of it mm -hmm. and uh, you had nine brothers and sisters yes seven brothers and three sisters so it was nine of us uh, my parents actually adopted a little boy so that I was 10 oh my gosh <laughs> they loved kids so. oh that's yes. great well you had an amazing experience um, Doran, and we're going to get into it a little bit. And the reason that you came out to California was that you had three children and uh, you were divorced at the age of 17, right? And you came to Los Angeles? So at the age of 17, I got married. Okay. And I came to Los Angeles. Um, and I had my three children in America, two in LA and one in Washington, D.C. Um, I actually was from the age of 15, my parents had arranged marriage for me, so I rebelled against them. You and did I, that in Belize, arranged marriage? Well, some families still do. Oh, huh. <laughs> and the person that my dad arranged marriage to was way older. I was, at that time, 15. I knew that at the age of 16, they wanted me to get married to this pastor, who was my dad's friend. And he was at least like 30 years old or in his 30s, and I was scared of him. So I knew someone that liked me at the church where my dad pastored. And so I talked to him, and we didn't date or anything. We just got married. My mom signed for me, and we decided at the age of 18 I came to America. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. And then you stayed here for a little while, and that marriage didn't work out. Yes. Four and years. then what happened? So four years into the marriage, I had three children, beautiful children, and it was a lot of domestic violence, a lot of physical, verbal abuse. And so I decided that, you know, this is not gonna happen. It's not gonna work out. We actually got into a very physical altercation where I had to call 911. Oh. And so they came and um, I, the following day, I went to get a restraining order because the police, they advised me I need to do it right away. We got a divorce, and after the divorce, I didn't know what I was going to do because I never had an education. At the age of about 15, my dad took me out of school to try to work because there were so many kids, and so I never finished high school. So I was saying, you know what, all my life I wanted to be a nurse, and I was so excited, like, this is my opportunity. So I didn't directly go to be a nurse. So I went to study computer. I wanted to know how to type. I wanted to know everything about computers since everyone was using it. And so after that, I went to Southwest College and I said, I want to know how do I become a nurse? And they said, ma'am, do you have a GED or a high school diploma? And I said, no. And I said, well, how do I get one? And they gave me a list of the GED offices that was offering it. And I remember the following day, I made those calls. I went up there, and within that week, I took the test. I failed, uh, I think it was science, and huh. I retook it, and I passed. And um, after I received my GED, I was able to get into Southwest College, and they told me I needed to take another test. And so with that test, that was going to determine the level that I was going to start on. and. Um, they told me I was going to start on a certain level, but I wanted to start from the ground up because mm -hmm. I really... Didn't know anything. Didn't know anything. Right. So then... So I went on. I was excited. I completed all the prerequisites. And at the end, when I was looking into becoming the RN, it was actually going to take a long waiting list. So I decided I'm going to go the LVN route, which is going to take me maybe a year or so, and then I could just do the one year 
of the RN at a different private school or something like that. So I was three months away from being a nurse and I was having the time of my life. I, I could finally see where my dreams are finally coming true. Mm, but you're like a pit bull, you don't give up. <laughs> you keep going. Keep I'm going. very determined. And at this point, you're not a Christian. No, no, I knew no. about God, but I ran away. your father was a pastor, right? He was a pastor. I ran away from the church um, only because of the circumstances that happened to me in my childhood. And I felt like I knew he exists, but I just didn't know I didn't see him moving when I called on him as a little girl, when I've been going through a lot of abuse and molestation and being raped at 12. Oh my gosh. And all these things. And, and so I remember crying out to him and I was like, Lord, I need you now. Where are you at? And I never tend to see him, like sending someone to rescue me or let someone find out what's going on. And so as a little girl, not understanding about God and the relationship that we could have with God and knowing all the things that I need to know that I know now. It was totally different when it comes to knowing the Word of God. Yeah, and having a personal relationship right, with right, Him. It's right. so different. But that people say, well, I know you've got religion. I said, oh, no, I don't have religion. <laughs> religion stinks in the nostrils of God. I <laughs> right. can't stand religion. But I do have a relationship with Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit's always yes. here on earth yes. asking. I mean, you can ask Him all kinds of things, and He's going to answer. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, okay, let's... let's uh, Continue on. You were with your friends, and um, you uh, wanted to go make up with your sister, who you'd had uh, disagreements with. You mm -hmm. hadn't spoken to her for a long time. So what was the scene? Yes, so my sister and I was at odds around that time. So every week I would go visit her, but she would refuse to speak to me. So I remember that me and my friends, we was going to go celebrate, but I wanted to stop in and check on her and just to tell her the excited news that three months away and I wanted to celebrate with her as well to, for her to come along. And she I, wanted three months away from you becoming an LVN. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. What was she doing at that time? What was she she was actually working at Walmart okay. at that time. Uh -huh. She lived in a back house, so the front house was vacant for a whole year. Now when I arrived there, it looked the same. It looked normal, like a normal day that I go visit. And the gate was always opened. And I walked in the gate and I walked around the corner and I saw this German shepherd just sitting there just like this. And we looked at each other. We exchanged like just eye contact. And he was so calm. And I said to myself, let me just go outside. I'll call my sister and let her come out and talk. Or if she don't want to talk, then we'll just leave if she don't answer. And as I turned around, I heard this huge crawling out of nowhere. It's like it's day and night, like something changed, like something evil got into this dog. Wow. And it knocked me to the ground. And I remember on the ground. The dog knocked you. Knocked ground. me to the ground. And I remember in nursing school, they said, you know, if your juggler veins are damaged or if you get cut, that you could bleed to death. And so all I could remember is holding my juggler veins and fighting for my life. I was kicking as much as possible, but the dog got my nose, the, my nose and my lip. And I could remember tasting the blood and the dog's saliva just mm. left from the growl and so vicious and evil. And Whose I'm, dog was it? It wasn't your sister's so dog. So after the coma, I got to find out that the dog was actually belonged to some people that just moved in the front house. a week ago and the dog was abused. So the dog was abused, but it's like it was on um, a defense from the abuse and everything that was going on at the house. And there was no beware of the dog sign. So I didn't know that there was a dog. Yeah, yeah. So then it started, it started attacking your face. Attacking my face. And I remember it, I felt like I was down there forever, Mary. So my car was parked on the uh, other side of the street, on the side where I was being attacked, there was trucks and pickups, so my friends couldn't see what was going on. Oh my God! It was blocking. I, I oh. felt like I was screaming, but 
The growl felt like it was much louder than my scream. And I was there, I heard this voice, and, and again, everything just flashed before my eyes. My children, I thought this was a day that I was gonna die and I'm not gonna come back. Uh. And I remember my dad's voice from one of his preaching that he loved to recite this verse, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I kept hearing that, and I kept hearing the voice saying, fight, fight, don't give up. Because I was about to say, okay, this is it. Maybe this is how I'm gonna die. But that voice encouraged me and gave me the strength and the courage that I needed to fight off this dog. Yeah. And I fought, as I fought off the dog, I remember it pulled off my lip. Oh, and uh, at this time I got up and I was kicking the dog and I start running, but I couldn't get to the gate in time. So I had to jump a fence. At this time I'm in my nursing uniform and as I proceed to jump the fence, the dog grabbed my nursing shoes and that's where my head hit the pavement. And I was not unconscious at that time, but I didn't remember anything else from that time. Now my friends saw me trying to jump behind a pickup truck, but they said I fell. And that's the picture that I have in there with the blood on the back of the pickup truck. And they said that they rushed over there. One of them ran over to me, one of them ran to chase the dog. The dog came behind me, and so the neighbors came out trying to chase away the dog back in the fence. Oh, the neighbors closed that own the dog? Um, no, some other neighbors oh. came. And um, my friend ran over there, and she said that she began to do CPR. We just learned CPR a week before uh. in nursing school. Wow. And that was only God, that was only the grace of God that he teach us, have us learn these skills the right time, mm -hmm. because we never know when we might need to save a life. Yeah. And the thing that I remember was in the hospital. I was at the hospital, I had an outer body experience. So the last thing I remember was jumping the fence. And then in the hospital, I was actually unconscious, I was told all the way up until the hospital. But I didn't feel unconscious because I got to see this person being operated on, which was Well, me. like you describe in the book, it's like you're hovering yes, over yes. the actual physical body. Yes. Your spirit is up on the ceiling. Yes. Now that's really interesting to me because I did a uh, life after death uh, documentary on mm. people that lo lived and, and they saw themselves in the body and that sort of thing. It was a... Um, I, because I, it had interested me since 1953, when I was about three years old, my my father was in the San Francisco hospital. He'd had mm. a heart attack. And my mother and I were sitting on the bench looking at the bed mm -hmm. where she, his body laid. Mm. But he, when he came out of it, he said he, his spirit, was sitting on the edge of the window sill, wow. looking wow. at both me and my mother, trying to figure out whether he was going to go or whether he was going to wow. stay. And I guess because he was looking at us, he decided that he needed to stay and protect us. Wow, <laughs> wow. Yeah, so he lived on for another 20 years. That's amazing. And uh, it was awesome, but yeah, I'll never wow. forget that. And then when I went to Las Vegas as a radio news director, I also worked in public TV. Mm -hmm. And um, I got this documentary together about life after death. Uh, Dr. Maurice Rawlings, who wrote a book about that, he was an emergency room doctor, and he would see people. He would see people that were going to heaven and how peaceful wow. they were, and just their countenance was just, uh, you know, just calm, and they were just f like floating up in the air. Wow. But the people that were going to hell were screaming and crying mm. and saying, you know, and cursing and all kinds of stuff because they wow. didn't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. And because the, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. That's and once right. he comes into your life, That's he right. changes everything. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the people are going to heaven were peaceful and, and the other ones were, um, you know, in, in great wow. distress because there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Mm -hmm. And that's right. That's right. <laughs> you got to do it right here on earth because you're a speaking spirit. You have a spirit. Come on. You live in a body, but you've got a soul, which yes. is your mind and your will and your yes. emotions. Yes. And you've got to, you know, your spirit's got to side with God right on. here on earth. That's or, right. Or, you know, when you pass over, you're gonna be sent straight to the pit and nobody wants to go there because mm -hmm. it's a place of torture, gnashing That's of right. teeth and 
hellfire and brimstone like it says in the Bible. And you think, oh, that's just fantasy. No, mm -mm. it's not fantasy. It's real. it's real. And people who have gone there and come back. I also had Kenneth E. Hagen on my uh, documentary, and he was talking about, uh, you know, he went to hell. Mm -hmm. uh, because he was just a nominal Christian and never had a relationship with Jesus. It was all just, you know, like going to a church and uh, going through the motions. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> Jesus doesn't want you going through the motions. That's he wants right. you to be in relationship with it, yes. you and how you ask him into your heart to be your personal Lord and Savior, which we will do, which Doran will do at the end of this broadcast, because God wants you yes. in heaven. He doesn't want That's you right. to go to hell. He's a loving God, yes. and all good things come down from the Father of lights. Amen. So I had him on telling the story about going to hell and how he came back up, up, up out of hell and how he realized that he had to have a personal relationship with Jesus. And then Dr. Maurice Rawlings, the emergency room doctor who could see right in front of him people going to heaven mm -hmm. and going to hell as they were passing away. And then I also had Elizabeth Kubler-Ross on who gave her testimony mm -hmm. being the founder of the uh, hospice movement. But the unfortunate part of that was that she was the one that was being worshiped and not Jesus Christ. Wow. She, we went down to her um, uh, uh, compound in Escondido and uh, people, she would stand there in long white robes and people would bow down to her. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> sort of like wow. a Jezebel situation. Lord of mercy. And uh, a lot of times in the past, I don't know how it is now, but the hospice movement would uh, encourage people to die it, just to let them go and mm. not to, you know, have wow. any relationship with Jesus or anything like that. Just You can just go on into eternity. Well, yes, you can mm -hmm. go on mm -hmm. into eternity, but you're either going to go to heaven mm -hmm. or you're going to go to hell. There's only two places your That's spirit's right. going to go. That's right. So you make that choice right here on earth. And Doran's going to tell us what happened while she was unconscious and her spirit was lying above the hospital bed, watching everything that was going on. Yes, yes. Oh, my God. That was the most amazing feeling because it wasn't, I'm looking at this person in pain, which is me, but I'm not, the person up there is not feeling anything. No, you didn't it was feel just a anything piece. after all the pain and everything of oh your my lip God. being torn off. Right. No pain. No pain. At this but time. But that was your spirit, not your body. Yes, because we are, we are a human being, but we're having, we're a spiritual being having a human experience on this earth. Oh, so good. And one of the things that, that's so amazing is because I had all these questions. I had asked my dad, I said, Dad, how do you know where we're going? I used to ask him all the time and study and try to understand because nobody didn't come back and say, okay, I went here, I went there. <laughs> and then I said, well, everyone says that they're the one, the Adventist, the Catholic, this one, that one. And so my dad always used to say, it's a personal relationship that God wants to have with you that each parents on this earth have a relationship, different cultures, different people with each other. God want to have a personal one with you. And I didn't understand all that. I didn't want to understand. I think I blocked out all that because I was more focused on the pain that I went through rather than what God has for me moving forward in my future. Because during that time with your parents, you were being abused and all this sort of thing, right? Yes. So yes. that blocked any kind of want yes. for a relationship because if he represented right, Jesus, right. you're like, no, right. please. <laughs> right. I wanted to end my life at a point in my life at, at the age of 12 when I was raped. And um, I actually had a, got pregnant and abortion. And so all these things I wanted to do with my life because I didn't know my true identity and who I was in God. In Christ, but yeah. Right. And so while I was there in the ceiling, I'm looking at this person being you're, operated on. We're back on. in the hospital now. Yes. And your, your body's on the hospital bed. Yes. And you're above it. Your spirit is yes. hovering above it, looking down on your body with yes. all the doctors and nurses around it. Right, right. And I'm hearing everything that the doctors are saying. I remember this one specific doctor, she had black hair, young doctor. She was like shouting, get the gauze, get the suture, get the, all these different things. And while she was operating, I remember hearing this flat line just went flat and there was chaos everywhere. And while everyone was rushing, I was taken through this beautiful channel. I, I remember. Your spirit went up through that yes. channel while your body was flat. Beautiful, beautiful channel. 
all different lights and it was wrong. It was, the way I could describe it is being under a train station in a train and it goes fast and you see all the lights, but real fast. And the farther I went in this channel, the less memories I had on this earth. And so, so I, the farther you went into the tunnel, which was going to eternity, which yes, was going to heaven, yes. the um, less memories I had on this earth. You didn't remember anything about what was about your family, about your nothing. parents, about your children, nothing? Nothing, nothing. Huh. So when I, I appear in this beautiful world, I was a huge giant. No, I don't have no, I thought I live here. I'm here all like a blink in, of my eyes. And I thought I lived there. I didn't have no memories of this earth. But again, I didn't have no memories of this earth, but of the world, the heavenly world where I was in. But I thought I lived there because... It was just natural? It was just natural. And um, my hair was black like when I was younger. I was in this white dress. And I'm in the clouds playing and I move away to clouds. And I remember looking all over the world and there was waterfalls. There was, looking over heaven. Yes, yeah, heaven. Yes, yeah. I'm looking over heaven. And it's so beautiful, waterfalls everywhere, green trees. I don't even, I didn't even see a brown leaf. And I remember walking over to the waterfall and I sat there like I'm sitting in this chair because I was so huge. And I remember looking over to the left side and I saw people waving and some people calling me. And I said, let me go see what they They're wanted. calling you by your name, Doran? Well, they didn't call a name, they just hand signal. Oh, okay. Yes, I uh -huh. come over. And I went over there and everybody had on robes, beautiful silky robes. They did, everything was natural, no makeup. Everything was beautiful, all different colors. I didn't know colors like that exist in this world, on this earth, while I was in heaven. And they were hugging me and greeting me and welcoming me like they were waiting for me. And some of the faces in my mind, I'm hugging them, but I'm like, I know, I know them from somewhere. I just couldn't put a name to these faces. And as I hug them and I greet them, but I, the one other thing I want to go back on, while I was walking towards them, I start shrinking to the level I'm at right now, my, huh. normal, my normal height. And I remember them showing me and walking with me and everyone was just so happy and they're holding my hands and we're, they're praising the Lord and they're just worshiping. And I could feel the energy, I didn't say, I didn't see God and I, I didn't say, oh, there he goes. But I felt this beautiful, it felt like he wrapped me around with the energy. I know he's here right now. I know that he's everywhere. But the energy in heaven is, no night never came. I didn't even know I was there for three months. I thought that it was you one day. You were in a coma for three for months? For three months. I thought it was one day because no night never came. It was brighter than this light, this day that we are having, the sun that we can't stare and look up on. It was brighter than that. It was as if God, he, we know that He is the light of the world. Yeah, he is. He God. was the light. Jesus, he he was the, the energy. He was everywhere. He, for the first time in my life, looking back, I felt the, the peace, the love. I felt the God that I ran away from. Mm-hmm. He finally showed me that I was always there for you, no matter what you went through as a kid, mm. no matter the torture, the molestation, the rape. When you thought that I wasn't there, I was always there mm. carrying you. Mm. But he knew that my story was going to be able to use for someone else out there, that it didn't happen to me. There's somebody for listening me. right now that has yeah. that story, and they're, they're relating right. to you, Doran. It happened for me. And so, because of the goodness of God. That's it. The goodness, how he gave us a second chance at life. Every day we go to sleep, it's like you being in a coma because you're not, tomorrow is not promised. Right, it's not. Today is the day where salvation. he wants you to be able to say yes to him. Yes. And no to the things of this world because I turned to the world for years trying to find fulfillment and joy. It was only temporary, but this eternal God, he said, I'm gonna give you time on this earth because I don't want you to live in eternal sadness and pain and agony. Uh. 
But I have an eternal place for you. And it's heaven that is awaiting us. And so while I was up there, we was walking all around. There's music, there's worship in different ways. I love country music. So one of the things that was gravitating to me was although I didn't have memory of this earth while I was in heaven, I still gravitated towards the Western the country music. Mm. And I went over there and people was just praising the Lord, people playing all different instruments, the guitar, and doing all these things. And I was so amazed. And it felt just natural mm. that everything that God places in, we all came from, we all was taken from Him. He gave birth to us. And so we are all take we are all gifted with different pieces of him. Mm -hmm. So on this earth we're yeah, just practicing. Gifted. Everybody's yes. got a different gift, yes. a different purpose. Yes. And you just have to tune in yes. to the Holy Spirit just like a radio frequency Ooh, to see what yes, your purpose Lord. is, right? Oh my God, yes. So what we're doing is using those gifts on this earth because we're practicing what we're gonna be doing. In heaven, in heaven permanently yeah and it's just so awesome uh, what were you doing do you know oh my god i was playing the uh the guitar oh you were i always wanted to play the guitar in oh. this part so it came in natural i thought that this is what i do you play the natural. guitar here i play a little bit uh-huh but I never did before. My my kids said, this is totally not my mom. Ah. Like there was someone else that came back. I never spoke about God. Yeah. But while I was up there, it was so amazing. I, it, it felt so natural. It felt, I felt in place. And so one of the things that God showed me was people worshiping in different ways. People kneeling down. But there's no idol. There's nothing in front of them. People just praising with their hands, people lifting up their hands. It was just people twirling, the kids twirling around. There's kids playing. No one didn't watch them. There's animals everywhere. No one wasn't fearful. It wasn't there were animals there? There were animals everywhere. Dogs and cats? Everything, uh -huh. and they weren't attacking me. <laughs> uh -huh. And it was just an amazing, no one wasn't rushing to go to work or worrying or having anxiety and stress and depression and all these things that we go through in this world. But there must be millions and millions of oh people Oh my there. God. I felt like I walked over the earth in one day. But it felt, I, I can't, because you don't get tired. It's not like I go to sleep. Uh. It, it's, oh, I just wish that you could go in my mind uh. and see, because it's so vivid. And I get so excited when I think about it because that's what I'm looking forward to. And that's why I can't shut up about who God is and my experience because all our experience is not for us. I, I grew up with my parents telling me, don't tell your brothers about what happened. Don't tell this one, don't. And I lost my voice. I felt like I didn't have a voice to be able to tell them what exactly happened to me as a little girl. And you mean when you had a, 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 you got pregnant, abortion, and all yes, that sort of thing? Yes, yes. And they didn't want to hear. They just said, let the past be in the past. But I was suffering in silence. And that's why I wanted to take my life because I said, what's the use of you me? You wanted to commit suicide? I planned it out. I what, ran away. What, what age was that? I was 12 years old when oh I got my raped. Gosh. And I was, it was almost time for my birthday. And um, I was 13 at that time when I got the abortion. My dad uh, had a friend who was a dentist and gave me the abortion without medication. Without and and the anesthesia. Gruesome, gruesome. Oh yeah. my God. Gruesome. And I remember almost breaking off my mom's hand and she was just there screaming. The more I screamed, the more she screamed. And it was horrible. And I remember that little girl going through all that stuff, but now I know that all that stuff that happened again was not for me. It's for someone who is watching to know that God loves you through your pain, through your agony, through the depression, through the storms that you went through as that little girl. And I want you to know that that thing that happened to you was, was not your fault because God gave all of us free will to do His will. And that person that did it have to be able to give account to God and know that God loves you and He cares for you. And there's a second chance in the Word of God. He wants you. He wants you to have a relationship with Him. 
And now you're a marriage and family therapist. You're yes. helping people at the church. <laughs> you're helping people all over with yes. your videos and everything else. Yes. It's so awesome. Yes. And I find fulfillment in doing it. Oh, yeah. I do. We have a lot of people get healed. Yes. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> so you were up there. You were in a coma for three months for three in months. the hospital? For or they three put months. you in a, a, not the hospital, but they put you in another place? or? I am not sure. Because oh. after I came back, I had amnesia for two years. You had amnesia for two, two years. years. Wow. Yes. All right. Well, we're going to go into, um, we help women in domestic violence with our RISE conferences. We're wow. going to do one next month, uh, September in Maui. We've been doing it there for many, many years, 18 years, actually. Wow. And we take women out of shelters, and um, we call oh, them yeah. diamond girls, Doran. Woo. Yeah, because we polish them up with the Word of God. I love it. So we're going to go into that right now. Your name, and you can tell me what Arise has done for you. All right. Okay, ready. My name is Krista Lathan. Hi, my name is Shay Shay. Hi, my name is Gaylene. Hi, everybody. My name is Christine. Hi, I'm Carol. I received the Holy Spirit, and it has changed me to be sober. I no longer drink, smoke weed, do cocaine. Hallelujah. Smoke cigarettes. I am free and free indeed. I fought with addiction, divorce, mm -hmm. domestic violence, you know, all of that stuff. And I just feel like knowing that I have women surrounding me and being there for me and helping me through it just gives me more hope. The Arise Conference has given me the gift to see the beauty in things in a different way. Um, to trust in people, uh, more so women. This conference is enormous. The speakers are awesome. They leave an impact in your life. They've left an impact in mine. Just being in these conferences has given me something to look forward to in life. Coming from a background of addicts and alcoholics, such as I did, right? And, and not really having that firm foundation in who Jesus Christ is, not just as the lover of my soul, but as the Father. Arise has really been a big part of my life in setting me free. Learning from this Arise Conference, how to be faithful, how to be compassionate, and uh, how to have love, most of all love. When we have love in our hearts, then we are able to conquer anything and do everything that we possibly can. I get to go home and just walk a different story now. I'm just grateful there's there's nothing that I can give back to this program except for breathing life into others like it has for me. I just really love you guys and love what you guys do. You know, thank God for Mary and all of you guys because honestly, you guys are amazing. So. Mm -hmm. Here's to the rest of you Diamond Girls that are going to jump on board. May you have the same experience that I had and I have. And may you live continuously to serve the Lord. In Jesus' name. I love that so much. Those girls were such a testimony. It's every, every time we have a conference. We get amazing transformations and life changes. Drug dealers wow. going to sociologists and uh, people wow. going across the other side of the island, getting into a business, and after being thrown out of a car at 60 miles an hour. Lord it's mercy. just amazing what God wow. does. It's the Word of God. It's not us. It's just That's His right. Word. That's you right. know, it's like you're talking. Well, I'm so glad to have Vast, uh, First Lady Doran Collins on with us today of Calvary Baptist Church in Hawthorne, California, and she went to heaven. So if you're interested in what uh, heaven is like, she's telling us right now. But Doran, tell us a little bit more about what it was like. You were in there for three months because you months. were in a coma for three months, and it yes. seemed like night, no, no night, so you never knew no what night. time it was. I didn't even know. Time didn't exist in this world. Time didn't exist. It well, didn't that's exist. nice. No so we night take never exist. <laughs> stopwatches off and our time management down. I'm getting so high on you, Lord. You're amazing. <laughs> Have your way. I loved it. Oh, my God. So I was there in this beautiful world just having a time of my life in heaven. And all of a sudden I felt, and this is after three months, but I didn't know, 
All of a sudden, I felt something that I never experienced before. I felt this horrible pain from my throat. And I, didn't, I couldn't understand. And you were in heaven and you had this yes, pain. Yes, I had this pain. You're not supposed to be pain, feeling right, any pain in heaven. Right. And I felt this pain and I heard this voice saying, um, you're not going to be able to see me because, you know, you've been in a, in a coma for so long. And I didn't understand how can I live in this world and now where am I at experiencing this? Who is the voice? It was a doctor that's saying that, um, hi, do you know where you're at? And asking all these questions and I didn't so understand. So you come down from heaven back into your body? Yes, I'm coming to, I'm coming out of the coma this time. And I didn't understand, I couldn't talk, I couldn't walk, I couldn't do anything for myself. And so I didn't, I couldn't explain to them because they had my mouth um, wrapped, uh, I had uh, wires and it was a lot of operations. So Your even if I tried up. to move, it was so painful. So I had to be able to try to, I'm trying my best to explain. I'm trying myself to move my hands and I, I'm trying, I'm shaking my head. And they had to wait until I was able to communicate. They bought me papers, try to write stuff. And after I was able to like speak a little bit, I told the doctor, <clears throat> I said, and I couldn't, still can't see the doctor. I said, I can't see you, but there's someone else in the room. And they said, ma'am, it's no one else. I said, yes, I'm trying to point. I said, there's someone else right here. And I'm pointing my hand on my left leg. There's this hand with a white robe this person is wearing, but I can't see the face because it was so bright. And so I'm pointing and I said, there's someone right here because my mouth is still. So I'm like grinding my teeth and trying to explain there's someone right here. And he said, no, ma'am, I can't. There's no one. I'm putting my hand. There's but no one Jesus. there. It was Jesus. He brought me back for a reason and a purpose. And I know now that he gave me a second chance to be able to tell the world that he too exists that no matter our circumstances we will face on this earth, that he too had to go through so much for us. He died for us. So why can't we be able to carry burden in order to be able to say, you know what, this happened to me, but I know that God, he said that we have to bear it on this earth, but go through knowing that I am there with you, that I'll never leave you, or I'll never forsake you. you. That sometimes, like the, the song says, two set of footprints in the sand. A lot of times we feel like when we see those two footprints, that we feel like it's ours, we carry that burden alone. Mm. But that was him. He was the one carrying us as like a baby. And so, no, at that time, I didn't understand. I said, I didn't understand why I'm seeing him. I'm not seeing the doctor, but when I was able, to see the doctors, I couldn't see that person there, but I know that I know, and nobody can tell me that he wasn't there, and nobody can tell me that he's not here right now, because that's why we're breathing. Mm. That's why we have life. Mm. And so when I was able to see him, I told him that I don't live here. I'm gonna close you're my eyes. The I'm telling the doctor. The do your doctor's standing because right he, in front of here. You're right. telling him you don't live here. He's asking me my name. I said we don't have names in this place. There's no labels. There's on the child of God. We're children, and I, I, he couldn't understand. And I said, I'm gonna close my eyes and go to sleep. Things that I never said in this world. Sleep. We didn't use that word. And when night came, and I, I look outside the window. And I look up in the sky and I ask him, what was that? And he said, that's moonlight. And he didn't understand it. He was asking all these questions, what year, what president? And I was just getting so frustrated. Huh. I went through this stage where I was so upset. I was so mad. Something that I never experienced in this other world. And I was so ex I was getting frustrated because I was frustrated. Yeah, well, <laughs> the doctor I didn't was, understand where you just right, been. You just right, been to heaven. Right, and he brought these kids in and he said, do you remember them? And I said, no, I don't know. I get everybody out the room. I don't you brought see your no own children, what the children came to see. I couldn't remember your them. three children. Right. Yeah. And they did all these tests and all these, and I had fluid on, on my brain. 
and and my children was crying but I didn't understand it felt like somebody just put these kids on me with a responsibility that I don't know how to care for them I didn't understand why I was still here day after day I was waking up and I'm not remembering and so after a while they said that you had amnesia and I remember the doctor said it's something like your last between two worlds ma'am like he said it very sarcastically but that's why I named the book Lost Between Two Worlds. Lost Between Two Worlds, because <laughs> you were. You were you were you wanted right, to go back to right. heaven, but you were here on earth right. and there were your three children and you didn't right. know what to do. You didn't even recognize them. Right. That must have been right. tormenting. It was. It was the most painful thing to see that. You tell me that I have a family, you tell me that I have children and I can't remember them and I couldn't understand why the only memory that I had was in heaven. I said, I was explaining to him about, there is a God. You don't get, I didn't get to see him, but I knew he was there. And we worship him. He said, ma'am, there is a God here too. We worship him. I said, well, how do I know about this God on this earth? And he bought in this Bible, a red Bible, like the ones that they the have. The doctor did? Yes. Oh. And he bought it then. He said, this is how we know about God. But he was not a believer. He just bought in the Bible because he heard me talking about God. And I said, I want to talk to the nurse or the doctor. She, I describe her. She had black hair. She was working on me. I saw her in the operating room while she was working. And I heard and I told him everything the doctor said. And I described her. And he bought her in. And she was crying. And she came over and hugged me. She said, I never believed that in a God until today. He said, because you was already gone. There's no you way for you to hear. You were flatlined. Right. Nobody was there. She, right. In the natural, they, right. she, you could have not seen her, right. except if you were the spirit hovering right. above the bed. Right. And when I was able to talk well, I was able to sit with her and explain to her about the world in heaven where I was. And she was just crying. And she said, wow, I'm going to find a church. I'm going to start studying the Word of God because I didn't know that God exists. I was too confused, just like you was confused about all these religions and all these. I said, it's just a relationship. Yes, yes. You talk to him right where you are. Yes. In your vehicle, in your shower, in your house, no matter where. Yes. He is there. That's so freeing. Right. And um, it was a long process. Before I was able to leave, I had to go through a lot of uh, therapy. And uh, How long were you in the hospital for? I don't remember uh. because during the two years of my amnesia I was still going in and out of short short term memory uh. so anything that happened was like the next day I would forget oh my god even sometimes I'm better praise the Lord you're so awesome God sometimes my husband would wear a certain shirt and I would say I've never seen that I love that shirt on you I said when did you get that he said you say that all the time or if we look at a movie, a certain movie, some movies are, are remember, but certain movies, like I was watching a movie day before yesterday, and he said, how was the movie? I said, wow, well, it's an awesome movie. I said, I, I, I would look at it over and over. He said, we did watch that movie so much times. Ah. So certain things, I would feel like the first time that I ever experienced it. And so, but I thank God that after being after the coma, I went home, and the doctor said, don't show her no pictures. Let her continue to go through her therapy. Let the memories come back on its own, natural. So when I would go to different places, it would jag a memory. Mm. And I remember the first memory that came up. Well, let me rewind, because my daughter, who took care of me, Megan, she took care of me, didn't want to leave my side at all. Mm, she would precious. feed me, and I remember I said, loose my belt. I want to learn to feed myself. I said, I feel like you're enabling me. And I said, what would your mom want you to do? Just stay around here, taking care of someone, just not going to school? And I would ask her, she would cry. Because I would refer to them as someone else's the child. child. And I, she loosed me, and I remember my whole face fell in the food like like I was just a doll without no muscle and I was there laughing both of us laughing and crying and she I allowed her to feed me I was just stubborn I was just going yeah. through those phase and I remember I told her you got to go to school 
and eventually she would leave my side. She went to school, but I remember sitting up and dangling my leg on the side of the bed. I got a concussion, I think, on this side. And I remember every time I tried to stand up, it felt like someone was pushing me down, uh. like this load. So I remember it took me half an hour to get to the bathroom. I'm holding on to everything But inside. all this time, you've really not gone back to the Lord. I mean, you've no. gone to heaven, you've I'm come studying. back. I'm But you still really hadn't got a personal relationship right. with Jesus. I'm learning yet. who he was here. Yeah. I, I'm learning that the stories were so in, enticing to me about Abraham. And, and we look at soul properas in this world, but if you look in the Word of God, yeah. it has so many stories that we could relate to. Oh, yeah. And so the stories of Samson and Esther and, and all these stories of Hagar and what they went through, it really, I, it come alive in my mind. And I remembered that just being able to study this one particular story of the woman who daughter who had um, demon possessed oh yeah and she was asking the Lord and the Lord didn't answer her at all sometimes we feel like that and that's why I felt for yeah. years and he well he turned her away three times right and, right yeah. she kept going yeah she and didn't we, give up yes that's like you Dora yes, you didn't give yes. up yes and that reminds me of just being able to be resilient through persistent. our circumstances persistent that's what yes. you've got to be persistent we have to and um so as I went to the restroom, I never gave up. I was weak, I, was, I just held on. But I got to the restroom and I fell down. And I started crying and I said, Lord, and I urinated on myself. Oh my gosh. And I said, Lord, like, why would you bring me back to a place that I have to suffer? Why, why did you take me from such a beautiful place? And I started talking to him and I said, I was angry. I said, I want you to show me if not because every night I'm going to sleep I'm thinking I'm gonna get go back to heaven and I'm here still so you must have a purpose for me I said use me take I don't even belong to myself I don't have no self-control over anything I said I know everything belongs to you because well, at least you do that much you just haven't yes. had any personal relationship right, yet but you were right. sitting there in a pool of right uh, uh, urination and you couldn't do I, anything. I couldn't just even surrendered. Get to the bathroom and you had to surrender. I just surrendered. My Some of us right have to there. surrender. Maybe you need yeah. to surrender today. Yes. Maybe this is your moment of surrender. That's right. And you just have to crawl upon the Lord and Hallelujah. say, God, it is yours. I Hallelujah. give it to you, Father. Yes. I can't do anything with this, but Lord, you Hallelujah. can. So just give it to him right. and, and ask the Holy Spirit to come in and take that's over. Right. That's right. Right? And that's what I did. Yeah. You have to be able to acknowledge who he is. You have to acknowledge that he was the one that died for me. Yes, he That's did. That's why he chose us to be here on this earth. We could have been a, a bird, a lion, a tiger. We could have been anything else. But he chose us as his children. And the enemy hates that. Right. Because, because we, we have that much power. created in the image of God. Yes, yes. Yeah. And the power lies in his words. And if we use those words, it's keys that could unlock. That's why you get into yes. the scripture. You know, I have a scripture for every single one of uh -huh. my children, and I pray it over them yes. often. Yes, yes. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's such power in the words. It he is. Created the world God's word. He words. created the world yes. with the words. If he could create his yes. world with the words, he could create, create yeah. your world yes. with the words. That's why when you get the Bible, you start reading it, you read the Gospel of John, mm -hmm. it's a love letter to you, and God will speak to you. He, you can underline it, you can yes. uh, write in the mar margins, but God is talking to you through Hallelujah. that word. It may seem, oh Mary, that's so old-fashioned. No, mm -hmm. it's been working for 2,000 years, so you can work it right now. That's right, that's right. Oh my God, I love this verse. I just have to say, Deuteronomy 31.6. NIV version, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. I love this and I keep repeating it no matter where I go because a lot of times we feel like we're going through it and it's so hard, but he said he, he's not gonna give us more than we could bear. Right. That's mean he gave you the strength, he gave you the courage, everything right. that you need. You just have to be able to put on those, the armor, the full armor. Full I'm armor telling of God. You, you get in the Word. Ephesians Lord, 6, 12. Yes, yes, come on. Yeah. And I just surrendered my all there. And I remembered 
not long after, like three months after, was when I got my first memory. I remember sitting down looking at television with my children, and I remember giving birth to this little girl, and she's wearing a flower, purple flower dress. And I told them, I said, stop the TV right now. And I was talking in my language. I said, stop the TV right now. I have a memory. I remember that um, I had a baby, my daughter, and she was wearing this purple dress. And I was talking in my language, Belizean. And my daughter ran in the room and she said, here's a picture, here's a picture, mom. That was me. That was a real memory. Wow. And so when we surrender, God is able to do everything. All, all things are possible with him. And heal we'll your believe. heart and heal your soul yes. and your spirit, your yes. mind. Yes, yes. And doctors told me that I would never go back to school. Never because of the swollen. They didn't want me to put pressure. I remembered because they said it, I never used to believe. I was. I, my dad said I was stubborn like him, so I would do the opposite. And I remember. Well, stubbornness can be turned into <laughs> determination. Come on. And Jesus loves you to be determined, right? Yes. So everything I had to be able, I couldn't talk as much from the time I was in the hospital. I remember I, no one can take this away from you. In my mind, I'm saying in my mind that I am going to talk. So we got to be able to say what we want to see. Yes, and exactly. I have, I have this journal that I named. Say it to see it. And Say the it to end see of it. it is oh, all affirmations great. at the bottom. Because these are the things that I use. Because I, I made these things so I could be able to help people to be able to know how to use God's word. You don't listen to men. Of course, go to the doctors. You, God created doctors. He made them to be able to have wisdom, understanding on all these things. But remember, God is the greatest physician. So we have to be able to seek God first in everything that we do. Everything else will be added on. And that's what I did. And um, so I, in my mind, I say everything. I know I'm gonna, I said, I'm going to speak again. I'm going to be able to walk again. That's right. I'm going to be able to calling have these forth. memories yes, into existence. Yeah, I know I had yes. my son in 19, uh, when uh -huh. I was 41 years old, but we moved from Santa Barbara mm -hmm. to be evangelists in uh, wow. work out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh -huh. And uh, when we'd had the church here in Santa Barbara, I'd always said, you know, I've got two wonderful daughters, but I'm going to have a son. Wow. I'm going to have that son. That yes. son's going to come forth. Well, there was no sign of the sun. And everybody in the uh, church was laughing at me. Wow. Going, oh, Mary, come on. Wow. You're not going to, you're too old. You can't have a son. Mm. And then when I go to Oklahoma a year and a half later, bam, I'm pregnant with David Daniel Ooh, Hudson. My yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. But I had to call him forth. Yes, I had you to have to. Call forth your healing. Yes. Dodi Osteen was going to die of metastatic wow. liver cancer maybe 50 years ago. Wow. And she was given maybe three months to live, mm. but she decided that she was going to live and not die and declare yes. the works of the Lord. And she stood up on the inside. She acted like a yes. healed person. Yes. She went around cleaning her house and sweeping and doing the dishes. Hallelujah. And everybody said, don't do that. Gotcha. You're 80 pounds. You look jaundiced. She said, no, mm. the Lord says that by his stripes, I'm healed. healed yes. And she kept taking those scriptures and putting her first yes. name in there. Dodie is healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. She would... Uh, um, uh, pray those scriptures she would declare and decree those scriptures yes. out loud three times a day and mm -hmm. Dodie Osteen today celebrated her 90th birthday Ooh. last year and she's still <laughs> going strong I Woo. love it yeah. God is so good God so, you're awesome um, Miss Doran, Lady Doran you have uh, four minutes left we have four minutes left on our show and I want you to pray for people to get born yes. again and to realize that Jesus wants a relationship Hallelujah. with them. And uh, just bring the anointing in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord, I ask you right now, I thank you. I thank you. I thank, thank you for Jesus. second chance. I thank, thank you for God. your love. Thank I thank God. you for sending your only thank son you, to die for us sinners. Yes, Lord, Lord thank God, God, I thank you for this ministry. You, Lord God, I thank you for Mrs. Mrs. Hudson, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to continue to bless them, to be able to bless others out there, because even if it's that one, Lord God, all glory goes to you. Yes, so, all Father, all everyone that are watching right now, in the name of Jesus, you see and knows their pain, their agony, their challenges, everything that they have faced, Lord God, in life and what they're facing. 
So I ask you right now, Father God, just to touch them. Touch their heart. Make yes, them whole. Father, thank you Lord, I thank you and I praise you that all things are possible with mm -hmm. you, Lord God. Mm -hmm. And you said that you, by your stripes, that they are healed yes, and hold. Lord, so I thank you for your conviction and your anointing power, time. Lord God. Thank I you, thank Lord. you for healing and even for the perpetrators you, or the ones that think that they went too far and that they are not worthy of love. Lord God, I ask you to touch them in the mighty yes, name of Jesus. Thank you, I Jesus. thank you and I praise you, Father praise God, you because God. you're the great God. You're the yes, great yes, I yes, am. Yes. And Lord, you said that I will be whatever you thank call you, it Lord. to be, Lord God. So I thank you that you are our healer. You yes, are our protector. Father, you, you are our, my God, our counselor, yes, great Father, friend, our heavenly you, Father. So I thank, thank you, you right now where we stand. Lord, you say where two or three are gathered in your name that yes, you will yes, be there yes, to bless. Yes. So I thank you for thank blessing you, each one of their homes that they might be able to bring yes, glory Father. to your name no matter what they do what they say, where they go, Lord God, to be able to put you first and foremost in their homes, in their hearts, to have a special relationship with you. I thank you and I praise you for the home that you have awaiting us, that we might choose to be able to follow you. Lord, I thank you. I praise you for our lives, the lives that you have chosen to be here. I thank you and I praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, Hallelujah. we thank you right now for Lady Dorian. That, Father, she is a woman who's been to heaven and she's come back. But God, there's been such thank a transformation you. in her life. Thank and you. She had a, a, a religious experience before, but she didn't have a relationship. Yes. And now she has a relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. She has her three children. She's Hallelujah. married to a wonderful pastor and she pastors Hallelujah. down there in Hawthorne, California. But God, Hallelujah. you had a purpose for her and God has a purpose for you right. right out there. Um, I don't know what you're doing or where Hallelujah. you're, you know, putting your energy or your time in right now, right. but know that Jesus has a purpose Hallelujah. for you right here on this earth. And you say, yes. well, what me, Mary? Yes, you, yes. he created you. That's right. He created you. He put the breath of God in you when you were, uh, when you became a baby and you came out of your mother's womb, bam, Hallelujah. you had his breath, you had his spirit. His spirit is in you yes. and you are a speaking spirit. So speak out those things that you want to see. Yes. Speak out those, uh, exciting destinies that he has oh, for you hallelujah. thank you lady doran for coming yes. on and giving us your testimony today it was so great yes. and we asked you know everybody out there can get born again all you have to do is say jesus come into my heart hallelujah. be my lord and savior i ask you to forgive me of all my that's sins that's right that's and right and i'm the righteousness of god yeah in christ jesus in christ hallelujah jesus. and if you the book yes the if book. you want the book it's um on amazon DorianCollins.com. I have a lot of empowerment videos also on YouTube at Dorian Collins. I Dorian, love to empower. D O R I N Collins. D O R I N S. Yes. Yes. Dorian awesome. Collins. Awesome. Thank you so much for having oh, I me. I hope they put this into a movie. Oh, yes. I believe that that is going to happen soon. All right. God.